Hello Facebook and hello Instagram. Great to see you today. Just making sure everything is starting. Yep, I see it going. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to episode four of Singers Tips, Tricks, and Workouts. Today's tip is, and you'll see by the title, Can I Hear Me Now, Please? Okay, so what am I getting at? Well, it's really important before you start that live performance or before you sing and record anything that you can hear yourself really well. Um, I'm not going to talk about microphones today because that's super important too, but I'm going to talk about headphones and, and IEMs. All right. So, um, well, and I need to talk about the sound engineer guy. Okay. Uh, I've worked with some amazing sound engineers who really care about that I can give the best performance because I'm working for their client who brings money into their recording studio, right? So they care. I've also worked for some that are jerks, okay? And um, this is gonna be the case for you, both live and in recording. This may happen for you. So you need to make sure you have devices that you can have as much control as possible so that you can hear yourself. Um, I remember in my early days, I was working on a music video for, for a, a major label artist. They flew me in for the live video. And I was young then and afraid to speak up and I could not hear myself. Uh, finally, I did say something, but by the time I said something, the guy had set all of his levels and he was not interested in hearing me. Well, the live video was going to be turned into an actual um, recording, right? And so, and a lot of times we go back and we'll do fixes. They'll hire us to come back and do fixes from the live because things do go wrong, okay? It does go wrong. But in this case, it was so bad, I literally didn't know what pitch I was singing. So I had to do this. And this is a live video and I'm like, I'm sorry, but you're gonna want me to sound good tonight. And I'm carrying the soprano part and I think I need to hear what key I'm singing in. So this is something you can do if you're really having trouble hearing, is to cup your ear like this and your sound will come back at you in a nice way. Okay, but hopefully you won't have to do that. So I'm gonna share with you three things I have with me today. From the most expensive, these are Sensophonics, and these are actually molds that have been made to fit my ear canal. So an audiologist will put some goopy stuff in your ear and make a mold, and then uh, make these. And these actually will completely shut off, completely isolate, so that you can only hear the mix in your ear. This is great for saving hearing. If I had had this like back in the 80s when we were, when I loved standing next to the drummer and feeling the bass drum, <laughs> I kind of lost some high end hearing because of that. So this would have been great. Now the interesting thing about the Sensophonics is that this is actually something that you can control. Uh, this has a little box. They don't all have a box. This has a box and you can actually flip this switch and you can talk to people live. So because this cuts everything off the sound, you can't hear me talking and hello, hello, right here to someone. Uh, so if you want to be able to keep these in and not kind of readjust and you have a last minute comment maybe for someone you're working with, then you can flip the switch and you can hear them. So it has like a a port in it and then you can flip the switch back and you're completely isolated these are not cheap Sensophonics does make some cheaper models but I bought this because I liked having something in those situations where I could flip it off and still be able to talk like this and not scream or take my in-ears out which had been wired up my back and into right because we do that for videos we're wired up <laughs> so it's difficult okay then I have another set of in-ears here from Westone, which is a great company as well. They are a little cheaper, a lot cheaper. For uh, these are the mid, okay, these have dual drivers. I didn't buy the triple drivers. For vocals, I like to really hear a crisp, like I said, I've lost a little high end in my hearing. I like to hear a really crisp sound. So um, I bought the dual dry dryers, dryer, <laughs> washer and dryer set. I bought the dual drivers. I, and also with, with these come a lot of things on the end that you can put on. And I like these, they're very soft, okay? So if I'm doing lengthy 
shoots and also I can hear a little bit of the room and the band with these. Now if I switch the tips out, I get a complete isolation, all right? So it just depends on what you're looking for, what you're gonna need, okay? Uh, the third thing I'm gonna show you today is headphones, okay? So these are from Audio-Technica. They do have some cool colors too. I don't know why Facebook has such a glare and Instagram has such a great picture. I don't know. I'm not a lighting specialist, but these are completely, they will completely isolate. So a lot of times you're singing in the studio and you're up close to the mic and you're singing with a click, which is a great thing because if a guy's going to mix a project, record a project, he's got to be able to sync everything together, including your vocals. So where you might not like a click, you gotta learn to sing to it so that you can be in the track. It's a complete production. It's not just about you. I don't wanna hear the click. No, nope, can't do it. So, so these are isolating. They really do. The click won't bleed. But I will say, when you use headphones in the studio or even live, if you're a singer, you need to take part of one ear off, slide it back a little bit so that you can hear what you're doing here. Uh, it's fun to get lost in the headphones. Oh, it's so fun, right? But you will lose your pitch. I remember growing up with my friend Marsha. She loved, <laughs> I'm gonna date myself here, Engelbert Humperdinck. And she, her dad had a set of stereo headphones. And she, we, she and I used to take turns. We would put those headphones on like this. And I would hear her sitting on the bed and she'd be singing oh, all over the place. Yeah, not good when someone is paying you to record or you're trying to do a video, okay? So those are the three things for the tip today. You want to be able to hear yourself really, really, really well because otherwise you will over sing. And the cool thing about a performance, which we've shared before and I'll share again, is emotion and different parts of your voice coming out, not just singing loud the whole time, not just singing a certain way, but having dynamics. You can't have the right dynamics if you can't hear. So it's, it really is our responsibility if we want to be professional singers and we want to do well, to get something, to invest in something so that we can do a great job, we can hear ourselves really well and not goof up and people will hire you back because wow, you added emotion to the recording, you brought the song to life and it's because you could hear yourself. I have plenty of stories of what happened when I can't hear myself. And you will come across these really stubborn sound engineers that don't care, but they probably won't stay in business forever. I better stop talking because do I have a little bitter past? I might, but I have great memories of um, Corey Miller in Indianapolis. And I think Jed Seneca's on here. Jed Seneca does great live sound. He does great studio sound. Uh, I'm going to list a list of references for these in-ears and things on my YouTube page. Uh, don't forget to go there for the exercise we're getting ready to do. And then I'm also doing the full uh, workout for breath support today. I'm recording it and I'm going to post it on my YouTube page, Shelly Rusk Music. All right. Uh, one thing about these live broadcasts is I'm going to be warming up with you. Okay. I'm bringing my dry, dried out, tired voice my morning voice. I'm not going to be coming to you all glammed up vocally. I just want you to be able to hear how the exercises work. So you may hear my voice crack here and there as I'm warming up, which leads me to my first point before we get to the exercise. When you're doing your vocal exercises, it's not about sounding pretty, but it's about technique. Okay. Technique is something that will be mastered over time. It's not something that, bang, I've got it. Okay, I'm gonna do this exercise, I'm gonna do it perfect, I'm gonna sound great. No. Having really great breath support, breath control, and all that happening while you're doing your exercises and actually sounding good will come with time, okay? But really not when I'm warming up. I'm super dry, California's been hot, 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 and my tongue feels like a dry washcloth right now. But we are gonna, we're gonna do exercise four. And again, we've been talking about breath support. Where does breath support, where does the support come from? By this time, you and I have worked together for a few weeks and you know you cannot support from the diaphragm. You cannot support from the diaphragm because you sing on the exhale 
And if you study what the diaphragm does, it simply relaxes for the exhale. If it didn't, then we would be walking around like, <sighs> all right, no. And even to make that sound, how did I do it? It was the ab muscles and the surrounding muscles that pushed the air out for me to give me a little more sound, okay, with the breath. So again, the support muscles are upper abs, lower abs, obliques, mid and lower back muscles. It's all around here. They come up under the diaphragm to create strength and move the air out with control and strength. Again, a lot of people have learned breath or control. They've been singing for years and they can sing long, long phrases, all right? Sometimes though they can't get soft up high on high notes because they don't have the strength to support that softer. They have to yell, which shows that their support's coming from the throat, right? Also, um, to do a really good chest head mix, which is another um, workout that we'll talk about later, because this is, this is important. The breath support has to come first. Strength has to come from the right place so that you can do all the other things and you can do it lifelong. My program, Shape My Voice, is an anti-aging guaranteed, if you work the work, if you work it, it works. We've heard that somewhere before. If you work it, you will be singing lifelong with a lot of strength and health, okay? But like I said, a lot of people come to me, a lot of singers, they've been using a lot of breath control. They have, they can sing long phrases, but they're losing their middle and upper register strength. And always, I mean 100%, when I do the vocal evaluation with them, it's always because they don't have the breath support, okay? So let me stop talking and let me give you this exercise, this whole, Schmeal that we just did will be on my YouTube page and Sometime today. I will have finished all of the four exercises I've shared with you over the past four weeks. It will be called um, Breath support workout number one. Okay. I did title a few things uh, Differently early on and then I'm as I'm getting into this. I'm seeing what's gonna work best for you guys So this one we're gonna use the the E vowel the A ah vowel and the O vowel uh, more on the open throat and the resonance, why in the heck we use those vowels later. But right now, you're going to think about that connection we just talked about. So to warm it up, just get that connection going. Do this with me. Again, it's he, ha, ho. Two of each. You hear how I'm moving the air out? I'm not going... All right, that's where I used to sing from, and a lot of the students I work with that have, have ruined their voice, that's where they sing from. No, let's get some breath support. I know it sounds counterintuitive if you've been told to hold your breath while you sing, but you actually will hold back your breath later a little bit with breath control, but you gotta learn the support system connection first. Then you'll have both the strength and the control, yes, and the capacity, which we haven't talked about yet, breath capacity, all right? So it's, let's put some notes to this. It's gonna be a five, 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 four, three, two, one, okay? I'm gonna go, and again, it's he, he, ha, ha, ho. And it goes like this, three, four, ready? He, he, ha, ha, ho. Hear my voice cracking? Again, I'm warming up with you. I want you to hear the process. So, um, yeah, I'm not getting enough breath support. I gotta get warmed up. I gotta get the thing moving here. Okay, let's do it again. One, two, ready, sing. He, he, ha, ha, ho. Mm. He, he, ha, ha, ho. It's a little better, but my throat is really wanting to control things because I'm a little tired. It's Monday and I'm tired. Too bad. I need to get the air moving. At this point, I would probably get on the floor and do a few breathing crunches, which I haven't shown you yet, but you get the idea. We're gonna move the air out quickly. All right, let's keep going. One, two, ready? He, he, ha, ha, ho. My jaw is trying to support. Uh-uh, no, don't do it. He, he, ha, ha. Oh, now to really do this well, I gotta take a deeper breath. I'm not getting enough air in. Let's take a deep breath together. One, two, ready? There we go. He, he, ha, ha, ho. A little 
crack there dry in the middle register. I'm going to take a little more water in. That tells me I'm dry. And I'm tense. So there was a little drama this last week in my, uh, in my uh, area of influence and love. That tightens the throat, all right? That's why we're going to start on open throat real soon. We're going out. Big breath. He, he, ha, ha, ho. I'm just not getting enough air in so I have an exercise um, on a workout that I've made called just breathing where right now I would turn on my metronome at about 63 and I would just inhale for four beats get real large exhale for four beats probably get that going because my body seems to be carrying some tension today okay and then I'm gonna go back there I feel more air he he ha ha ho 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 he he ha ha ho he he ha ha ho don't worry if you sound crackly like that in my program we separate the three um, abdominal breathing open throat and resonance and then we combine all three but we have exercises on all of them so you can really, really do well and get the hang of how it feels to do one and then put them together. Okay, this has been good with you guys. The workout, or I mean the exercise that we just did will be on my YouTube page nonstop without me stopping like this. Um, I will explain a little bit. And then like I said, the, the four exercises that we've done, including this one over the last four weeks, are gonna be combined and look for it on the YouTube page called Breath Support workout number one. Okay. It's been great to be with you. I'm going to look and see if there's any questions. Any of you have questions before we go about anything?